Okay, folks. Good evening. Wednesday evening. And I'm, my goal tonight is to get this guy finally done. Well, most of them anyways. So what are we talking about? Vlad the Impaler, of course. Oh, of course, I want to move it the other way. So this is what the stand looks like without flags and without the basing done. Well, the basing's done, it just isn't... Uh... It just isn't done. Uh, this is where you could see the difference between uh, this basing material and the original Liquitex. This one is very, m a lot rockier, almost like tiny little gravel. I actually like this one better than the, um, than the Liquitex. There's one thing I like better about the Liquitex is that uh, it is thicker. This one looks like it reduces more to nothing. And because the other one is thicker, when you're putting tufts in and stuff like that, um, it gives you something to press up against in, into. So, um, but other than that, I actually like this one a little bit better. The, the particles are more in scale with the figures. So, so here it is. You got, um, you got the, a standard guy over here. You got Vlad in the middle and you got the standard bearer on this side. We're going to zoom out a little bit and, um, and show you what we did the other day. You can see here in the corner of the screen here, the two flags I made. That's actually the image of them. And uh, I printed them out the other day. And the black one didn't turn out that. Well, you can't tell the folds and stuff on it very well. Actually, you can in this picture. And all this is is a image search. You do a Google image search for um, something you like, which in, in the case of, the, of this flag, this is what I did. And, um, and then I brought it into a paint program and added some, added some uh, shading in there, like if I was painting it by hand. And actually I added the tongue because the tongue and the orthodox cross were both in exactly the same red. I'm like, nah, it's gotta pop up a little bit. And, uh, and here's the Moldavian one. That one turned out a little bit more contrast between the folds and stuff in there. It's all fake folds, but it adds a little something and you just mirror image the thing and you make sure that you have the right place going forward like for instance this bowl it has the uh, the motif of the flower facing forward so when you fold around the flagpole it's going in the right orientation and I made a couple different sizes here because I didn't know um, what size I was going to use for the um, for the banner so more than likely I think I'm going to use the small one for Vlad um, the other one is just too, too darn big. So anyhow, it's easy to do. It's just time consuming. Mr. Collins, welcome. Joe, hello. Yeah, so um, in retrospect, I probably should have done um, the folds on, the, on Vlad's flag a little bit more um, with a little bit more contrast and... Um, you know, hold on one second. Bring it back. Okay, sorry about that. Um, but uh, I don't know what the hell I was saying. Um, I should have put probably more contrast in the black, but I wanted it to stay a black flag. I didn't want it to look like it start to look like dark gray or anything. So I think it'll be fine. Um, so what we're planning on doing is painting um, the actual basing on this figure tonight. Um, it's kind of a late start anyways, but I wanted to get that done. And... Um, and put the tufts and um, I guess I guess I could do the flag tonight. We'll see. We'll see. You have to do the flag afterwards. 
because otherwise it's one more thing that makes it difficult to get in there. So, all right. Let's begin by, of course, you then cut out the flags, attach them to the flagpole to use them as a painting guide. No, I this, that's actually what's going to go on the flagpole. Um, I'm not opposed to painting flags by, the, by myself, um, but if you have to paint something complicated and you have to do both sides of it, it's, it's really not worth your time to hand paint it because um, it's going to look imperfect. And if something were to happen, you could just print out another one. You know, it's not like I didn't paint it. I kind of did. I just used a, you know, I just used an image and modified it. So, um, and um, I just printed a couple different sizes. A couple things is if you do do that, you need to save it as a PNG. So the PNG is a larger file. And when you go to print it, it doesn't look all grainy and stuff. And that's happened to me before. Um, here's one that I did on my here of Edward the Bruce's flag here. It was uh, Robert's brother, and this one actually turned out really well. Um, you could see it almost looks like denim, actually. So it's easy to do. This is just an image, and you just resize it. And hey, Rick, and um, you know, you cook, put a couple different ones on there and, you know, hopefully we'll get to the point where we can do the flag and I'll show you how to do it. I thought of you yesterday. Uh-oh, what happened? I, I always like what makes people remind me of, of them. I think of Rick every time somebody wants to give me a, a drink that's not large. <laughs> uh, and, you know, the thing is, is, so here's the thing I hate about Facebook. Lots of people dislike Facebook for different reasons. There's only one reason I dislike about Facebook. You'll see something really cool. Like you go on your page, you see something really cool. And in the case of Rick, it's, he had this video of his bloopers where he cussed and stuff. So, you know, I'm into that. You know, I, I'm fine with cussing as long as you're not cussing at someone, you know. Um, so I see it, but... I immediately had to go to something else. I couldn't watch that video right that moment. But when I went right back to the page I was at, in other words, did the back arrow, the video's gone. I can't see it. So, um, Rick, would you would you send me a link on uh, on Facebook to that um, to that blooper reel? Because I didn't get a chance to see it. And I'll be honest with you. You so you, you did a video of your top 100 games, and I cheated. I went right to the listing and saw what games were on there. And I didn't see DBA on there, so I was like, I don't want to listen to this list. <laughs> be honest with you, I didn't recognize most of the games on the list. A few of them, a few of them are, um, at least you didn't have Catan on there. God, I hate that game. It's ugly to look at. You know, if, even if a game is, if a game is at least nice to look at, you know, you can forgive it. Uh, the local historical war game group is holding a small convention at the local Polish home. Not entirely sure what it is. I don't either. But I noticed DBA was ran. I'm considered giving it a shot. Wow. In the middle of Nebraska? You sure? You Really? People playing DBA in Nebraska? Well, you go there and you show them my videos and you tell them how to run games. This is how I want it run. <laughs> go there and say, hey, DBA is supposed to be fun. I've seen Tony have fun playing games. You guys aren't having fun. I'm out of here. <laughs> Peace out. Mic drop. <laughs> oh, man. That has a big effect on um, who you're playing with. Makes is more important than the game. Um more important than the game. I think our group, no matter what we would be playing, um, we'd have a good time. Okay. I'm only going to use the wet palette on this so I can keep this alive. Honestly, I'm glad you did that. That's what I do too. I hate when people make lengthy lists and don't post it in the description. I don't want to listen to the whole vid. I normally skip through it. So... 
I know that that is a massive undertaking to do that because I don't want to annotate stuff like that. I remember one of the first videos I did of 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 um, of a of a game video. Somebody somebody that contributed nothing to it wanted to complain. That's too long. You need to speed this thing up. I like you know it has a fast forward button. And, and as a video produ as a video producer, one of the worst things you could do is burn that person out. And what would burn me out the most is when I'm spending. 20 times more editing a video than I am creating it because um, I don't know how it is for you, Rick, but the most annoying thing for me is the exporting process. It's not editing the video. I already, before I ever edited a video, I knew what needed to be done because you've watched TV programming. You know when, you know, put this word in, have this one spin out, have this fade, put, you know. Put this in the corner. We all know if you've seen any kind of programming, you know how it works. It's just a matter of pressing the correct buttons. And for me, the editor I use, I do all of my editing on my phone. I have a powerful phone. And um, you'd think it'd be easier on the computer, but it's not. The computer, pro they're too complicated. They, they do all kinds of stuff that you don't need. And um, I did that... Um, what was that one program? A da Vinci Resolve for a little while. It's, it's too complicated. I'm not going to make commercials for NBC. You know? And um, you'll watch tutorials that these people make, that these wizards make on how to use these programs. And uh, oh, i gotta get, I got to lose some of my jewelry. It's getting in the way. And, um, and, and it's too complicated. You know, they'll start clicking around. And, you know, and it does all this stuff you don't need to do. But... Um, the more complicated you make the video, uh, I used to, my earlier videos, I used to put the player's name in and do the pan and put the name of the army and do the, that was just, it was making my, um, the exporting process a nightmare. Um, because on top of everything else, um, I can't use my phone while I'm exporting it. And, um, I can't use the phone while I'm exporting it and, um, it can jam. And it falls asleep. So like I'll do export and I have to like stay on it and like touch the screen like every 10 minutes or it'll fall asleep because of that process. Um, maybe there's a way to go around it, but I haven't looked into it. So nice black lining outlining on the horse tack and those miniatures. Nice attention to detail. I actually didn't do any black lining. I do um, the opposite. Uh, at least I wanted to put the text list in the description because I know a lot of people like me and just interested in the list and not having to watch the whole video. Yeah, well, I mean, you can make you can make the video a lot more interesting if, like, say you're making like a milkshake or something like that in the middle of it. That could make it interesting. By the way, have you attempted to make a second milkshake? <laughs> oh, I love it. Somebody who's worse at cooking than me. Perfect. <laughs> Um, yeah, so somebody was like, hey, the video's too slow. And I'm like, just fast forward it, dude. Or make your own video. <laughs> you know, it was a... It's a work in progress. I, I was thinking, they, for a while, they were getting better and better. And it's just, it's the exporting that kills me. Absolutely kills me. It's not uploading it to YouTube. It's the, and for those of you guys that don't know, exporting should be called um, crunching it into, pack, into packets so that when it's time to s upload it to YouTube, it can be formatted for that. So in other words, I've got the video exactly how I want it. Okay, go. And, you know, it, it takes, it takes, it used to take as long as the video was long, pretty close. So if I had a four hour video, that's four hours I had to mine the phone. And it wasn't like I was like, okay, well, we'll go, we'll, we'll film the video at night and then we'll start exporting it and then just leave the phone there. And then when I wake up in the morning, it'll be completely exported. Oh no, I'll wake up and be like, hey, where's it at right now? It only went like a tenth of the way in because the, the screen timed out and stopped the whole process. So yeah, it's really, really frustrating. The most frustrating part of, of the video completely, it's not even close. So, not touched that blender since. Yeah. You love looking at nicely painted miniatures. Me too. 
But you know what I don't like looking at? Not nicely painted miniatures. Now, let me qualify that. If you have miniatures, if you have a miniature company and you make nice miniatures or even not so nice miniatures and they're painted by someone who is not really good, you shouldn't post pictures of them painted because I've seen pictures. I've seen pictures of stuff I'm not even interested in and they're painted by someone who does a really good job painting and all of a sudden I want to play the game. And that happens if you've got pick, ever picked up a, pick, a, a copy of War Games Illustrated or anything like that where it is just makes you want to salivate to play the, the period. Um, you know, uh, if you look at... The best example I can think of is Legio Heroica. Legio Heroica has beautiful figures and a beautiful painter. They have a style similar to mine, but he does more black lining than I do. Um, and, um, and I like his style. It's slightly different than mine. Um, I'd be perfectly happy if, my, my, if I painted and, and that's what they look like. But I think that they sell the figures. I mean, I think he's, it's an excellent painter. Um, if you take something like a lot of Essex Miniatures stuff that's painted, it would have been better off if it wasn't painted. I just don't think it's very inspiring. Because you got a couple different things that are, you know, a couple different things uh, that are working. First of all, are they painted well? And second of all, do they pick a correct palette? And does it work for you? So I think that, honestly, if you're just going to take figures and just give them a black wash, or don't even, I mean, the only reason to give them a, a, a thin black wash is to expose some of the details and get rid of the glare. But other than that, just, just show me what they look like, unpainted, and I'm perfectly happy. Um, as a matter of fact, I was looking today at Gladiator miniatures, which were carried by, I want to say, Fighting 15, and there's still some of the range that isn't pictured, but there's a lot of the range where he's gone in and shown every figure that comes in a pack. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. Like, there's some packs that it looked like it was going to be like six cavalry and they were all the same pose, and that wasn't the case. There was actually some different poses in there. So I thought that was really, that was really cool. It's really simple. Like, you know, I, I'm not buying the, you know, how to, you know how to run a business. You know how to take orders over the internet. You can do all the tax filing stuff. Where there'd, there'd be my reason to not have a business. And all the stuff, all the paperwork you have to do. But you, and you have some pictures, but you don't have pictures of some. Like, that'd be the easiest thing to do, you know. Um... You're worried that if you stop by DBA events at the local Polish home convention that my expectation is going to be too high thanks to your channel. Well, you're not talking about Essex. I am. I am, Mr. Clay. You know, I think that um, if you're going to paint the miniatures, they need to inspire people, not be like, well, those figures don't look very good. I'm telling you, I have painted some dog figures. I have, and I actually, my challenge is to paint figures that are not top tier. They're second and third tier. And I don't go out and buy crappy figures. But a lot of the figures that I have, and I mean, I've got like 80 pounds of them. I've picked up because they've been given to me because nobody wanted them because there's something better that's out now. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to just not use these figures. I mean, if they're obviously the wrong figures, I'm not going to use them. But um, just because there's something better um, doesn't mean I'm not going to use them. And... Um, so my challenge is to take these second, third rate figures and they just about all paint well, you know? Um, so I, I don't like to play keeping up with the Joneses just because you need to be happy with what you have, not with what you don't. Because you're just, otherwise you're just, you know, buying other shit. You know, like the people that just like, hey, I bought a phone. Oh man, it was working great. But they came out with a new, the next model. Oh, I got to get rid of this one and get the next one. Why? You know, I mean, the phone company loves people like you, but you need now. If your phone doesn't work, sure, go get go buy the latest and greatest thing you can. But you need to be happy with what you have, or you're just never going to be happy. You know, so um, now it doesn't mean I won't buy some new figures. Like for instance, let me let me use an example. Okay, one of the armies that's on my to do list is. Um, um, Pre-feudal Scots. I've talked about them before. I have almost the entire army by Essex. And there's nothing wrong with them. There's actually a nice variety of figures. But 
there's some other figures made by a company called uh, 15 millimeter. Uh, no, hold on. 15 millimeter Q. No, I'm getting my, my manufacturers mixed up. They're called QRF, quick reaction force. And I don't, and they used to be molds that were made by a different company. I want to say they were feudal castings. I could be wrong. Um, anyways, they carry some pre feudal Scots figures that have, I think, they're not as good quality proportionally as Essex, but they have some really animated poses for a lot of the stuff. So when I go to do the pre feudal Scots, even though I have all the figures I could poss that I could use for the pre feudal Scots, I'm probably going to order one pack of each one of the pre feudal Scots they make. And mix them in because it's going to give the army a lot of character, um, and I think it's worth my time because you know I'm spending four or five hours a figure. I'm actually getting a little quicker, but uh, I'm spending an, a, a significant amount of time painting it. I might as well enjoy the end result, and um, you know that's the kind of stuff I do. You know, and um, yeah, do whatever you want. Some people want. Pre, uh, Pre-bought armies, Essex army packs, forget that. I'm not interested in that. Non-Litco bases, incorrect period figures standing in for other figures. Well, we do that sometimes. Good senses of humor, yeah, it's a problem. You know, they might be lacking the visual stuff we get there, yeah. A lot of people just don't have fun. I mean, I lately I've been having my ass handed to me, and I'm still having a good time. I might as well laugh about my Ottoman general getting uh, taken advantage of in his own tent. Poor guy. Um, some of their pictures are so bad, it makes my painting look good. Mr. Kevin, welcome. Yeah. I don't want to put I don't want to put somebody's painting down, okay? Because I'll be honest with you. I've I've won some games with an army that I borrowed and they looked horrible. It doesn't matter on the battlefield. They just sometimes the more horrible the, the figures look, the better they'll play. But um, you're trying to sell figures, right? I mean, so you need to inspire people. And um, like I said, I'll pick up War Gamers. Well, I haven't picked up a War Gamers Illustrated because nobody carries it here. But um, it'll be stuff that's another period that I'm not even interested in, and um, it makes you it makes you want to buy stuff. I mean, that's the whole purpose, right? Um, you know, if you're trying to sell women's underwear, you don't put ugly models in them. You know. <laughs> Anyhow, um, just saying, um, I think it's just it's just easier just just put what your figures look like, give them a, a thin wash, and um, or not, I just put them in a way so there's no you know glare and um, you know, and there you go. Look at hate mail about you're talking about models. Hey, I'm just telling it like it is. If you don't like what I have to say, then you know. I gotta tell it like it is. That's who I am. I don't want to pretend I'm somebody that I'm not. That's one of my biggest pet peeves is people that come over and they act a certain way and that's not really the same way that they are. I'm the same bundle of love <laughs> everywhere, <laughs> like it or not. Oh, <laughs> I'm happy with who I am, so. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah, there's a there's one particular period that I never got into playing in historical miniatures because the people that played it when I was growing up just looked like they weren't having any fun. I just never I never got into playing Napoleonics. They just weren't having any fun. The important thing is to have fun. You know, it it, it is irrelevant whether you win or lose. Um, you know, I would rather have an army that I'm happy with how it looks that I built. Than if it wins a lot, I'll still make fun of it or complain that they don't win and stuff. But I'm still going to use them, as I can control what they look like painting. I can't control how the dice are going to roll. I think I'm too zoomed in, aren't I? Let's see if we can't address that. Let's see if we can't address that. Let's go to. I think this is the screen I need to go to. Zoom, 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 zoom. Okay. Anyhow, I 
But I do enjoy the second tier figures. Second and third tier. The Irregulars. The, um, and I'm sorry if this is one of your companies that you guys do business with or, or if you're one of the owner of them. I'm not trying to, you know, put you down, but let's be, let's be realistic. The quality of the sculpting of Zeiston and Legio Heroica and some Kurasan, I'm not going to say all of them, some Kurasan, um, Forged in Battle, um, are, that's, that's your top tier guys. You know, you can't compare a regular to that. Now, do regular paint up fine? Absolutely. There's no problem with them. But some of the older figures, figure manufacturers, the other problem that they have is they don't have crisp details. Some of their molds might be tired, you know, worn out or what have you. And they only have like one pose per figure. So, um, you know, you have to, you have to take all that into consideration. That doesn't mean, you know, any of those are, are good for filling out an army so it has a unique look. My Irish, my Irish have a mix of figures. Some of them are just dogs. Um, but, you know, not everybody is the same size. And again, it depends on what you're doing. I would be hesitant to do that if I was doing like Roman legionnaires or something like that, where I want them to have a somewhat uniform appearance. I've played Napoleonics extensively. Oh, much fun. And so also so many ways to stress gamers. Some of the most complicated history is in that period. Okay, these guys rise up against Napoleon. Oh, wait, they get put down. Peace treaty. Okay, they're at peace. Then they come back again. <laughs> See, my 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 um my outlook is from a World War II gamer. Nobody ever like once they're out came back. <laughs> so I just never got into it because of the crowd. Just wasn't conducive to that. They just weren't having fun. And we like to have fun and make jokes and sometimes at your own expense. And that's what we're here for. Play the game seriously, but, um, but laugh about it. Because, you know, just doing stupid moves on purpose, that's, that's no good either, you know. Anyhow, we're almost done with the first color here, which of course is the one that takes the most time. Oh, this isn't centered, is it? There we go. Somebody will probably complain. I can't see your stuff. Hey, I thought you guys were just hanging out. Nobody's really looking at what I'm doing. We're just kind of hanging out. I'm not trying to convert anybody. You guys are perfectly happy basing your figures in white. Base coat, go right ahead. I just won't be doing that. I, I do what works for me, and you should do what works for you, too. I'm not evangelizing painting. The, the evangelical painter. <laughs> you know, this is, uh, do what you want, man. All right. 
Belichick really butchered that for me. Yes, yeah, somebody pulling out to me. I don't know what you guys are doing with Spellcheck. I, I guess I have all my Spellcheck turned off. I do a lot of typing of, of weird words and words in foreign languages. So, yeah, every third word is like, says, oh, that's spelled wrong when it's not. So I just turn all that crap off, even on my phone and stuff. You know, I text my mom and stuff in Spanish, so it can't deal with that, you know. So, um, yeah, I, have, I don't have spell check issues. I have uh, dyslexic fingers. I'll uh, type things, and uh, I'm of the generation that um, well, my brother is nine, eight years younger than I am. And he could type. He would rather type than write. I would rather write than type because I make no errors when I write, um, you know, grammar errors, spelling errors. And when I type, I do all the time. I'll, I'll touch another button that, you know, I'll touch a letter that I didn't mean to. And I can't look at this. I can't look at the screen and type. I, I, I got to look at the keyboard. And I'm not hunting for keys, but I've got to look at the keys. I'm just, I'm too old for that. I never learned it, you know, so... Um, I'm too old for that. Um, I didn't. I never took a typing class or anything like that. So um, I was doing stuff on a typewriter and stuff like that before just for my hobby things. But, you know, when I was in my early teens, but I never learned how to type. So I can't look at the screen and type, which is really frustrating because I'm, I'm a bit of a... I'm not really a grammar Nazi. I'm a spelling Nazi, definitely. And... Um, I don't like seeing things mis, mis uh, typed. So I end up having to reread what I just did or just, you know, glance at it and then miss things. I have to go back and edit them and stuff like that. So uh, I like to turn spell check. I'd like to turn. I'd like to turn spell check. I think you meant off, but my career really took off when spell check was invented. I don't misspell things, generally. We all do. We've all done it. I don't like to. I put a high value on spelling things correctly. I'm judgy. I judge other people that misspell things. Oh, hey, you got to know what you're all about. So, um, and my pet peeve of all pet peeves, well, when it comes to spelling is... People that use an apostrophe S to pluralize something. Oh, man. Makes you want to put them... Hey, here, here's what I want to do to them right here. <laughs> no, do not put an apostrophe S to pluralize something. <laughs> uh, my phone's autocorrect changes was to WAD, which... Which would you consider to be a word which I use more commonly? You just think was. My phone likes to... Oh, no, he must have meant wad. Good God, yeah. Yeah, I don't... I don't like directions talking back to me. I don't want my phone correcting things. Uh, I don't want lane assist. I don't want automatic headlights. I want cruise control, air conditioning, Bluetooth. That's it. I don't want the car to do other stuff. I don't want a self-driving car. If you're not having fun driving a car, get a more fun car to drive. Right, Billy? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> um, what's next? Oh, I need to get a... I need to get a scrap of... We need to zoom the hell out. I'm all up in my own self here. Let's see here. Yeah, I hate that apostrophe S. God! Oh. It must be because people don't read books. I don't know. I make, I make different mistakes. I'm not perfect. I just make different mistakes that don't annoy me so much. How about that? Okay, U.S. Field Drab. That's right. If you use apostrophe S to pluralize something, you become a lawn ornament. <laughs> Billy.
Billy says absolutely. That thing's not a stick shift, is it? Heck, they probably they may not even make one in a stick shift. I'm the only idiot in the U.S. that wants a stick shift. Yeah, baby. Give me some clutch. Like when you go look at cars and you get some sales weasel. That's right, I called him a sales weasel. That thinks he knows what you want in a vehicle. Get out of here. <laughs> get out of here. All right, let's get a brush that we know love us so much. Look at this guy. It also can't be too big because then you just create all kinds of chaos. We might as well close this thing up because we're not going to be using the we're not going to be using a wet palette for anything else. Of course, is where the hell did I put the lid? What the what? There it is. I never put it there. Well, now I can go with a the bottom there. Blue Billy Bronco. Blue Bronco Billy. So yeah, one of the other uh, one of the other videos. I think the nicest looking videos I do are when I do one of my armies where I showcase you know all the armies and and what the figures. I've made I think four of them, or whatever. But those just take forever to make, and they just don't have that many views. So I just think people just aren't really interested in them. I mean, the ones that get the most views are like games. So it's like, well, we'll just keep doing those, you know. Um, The army showcase things, they they just take a lot of time to do. They're not really long, so crunching-wise, it's not bad. It just takes a lot of time editing. You know, take out all close-up pictures of all the figures and put them in the corner as you show them. And, you know, it just takes a while. So I've, I've got, oh, man, I've lost count. I think this is my 30, this will be my 32nd army, something like that. Uh, I guess it's not really, it's not really relevant how many armies I have. We're just going to keep going. And I haven't thought about who I'm... Well, I have thought about who I'm going to do next. And I'm kind of torn about it. Old Mitch wants me to do one army. And I'm not so sure I'm going to do them. We'll see. We still got uh, we still got Polish allies to do. We still got another general to do. Uh, we got some time to think about it. I don't want to commit right now to who I'm going to do. And then in about a month, it's about right. In about a month, I'll decide that I didn't want to do them after all and did something else, somebody else. So I like to keep my options open. I like to be in an open relationship with the armies I'm painting. <laughs> all right. And then the last color, of course, is Iraqi sand. No clue if the sand really looks like that in Iraq. And honestly... I don't want to take very close of a look. Don't send me over there to do an inspection. Um, as soon as I find it, it must be this one. They actually do have a stick option, but the first editions came with a mandatory auto because of some compatibility issues. Now, I spent the last... 13 years driving an automatic against my wishes, so I'm not going back. 
which it's really difficult for me to find a vehicle that's a stick shift that's within a price range. Well, it, well, it's available here in the United States, so um, yeah, the price range is also an issue. There's just some big, I'm not, I'm, I'm not paying a certain amount for some vehicles. Of course, you could have probably just sold that Bronco for what the crazy prices they were going for and turn around and order another one. <laughs> and double your money. Really like and appreciate your many videos, post on game videos, very enjoyable. Instructive. Yeah, I keep thinking that I'm going to do one by myself and then I can go through everything, but you know, when I do stuff by myself, gaming wise, that's not painting, that slows down the production. So. I really pretty much just need to do this while I'm alone to get stuff done. I don't know why this one's so damn watery. We need to we need to put All right, let's go to plan B. Careful we don't get any of this stuff up on the horse's legs. Or we just threw away all the carefulness that we did painting this figure. Now, if we were doing a vehicle, that'd be different. You know, you could have some dry brushing and dust or what have you wear and tear on it, but not like this. And then we're going to do a little comparison to make sure that since we're doing these one at a time, that there's enough of the, you know, you don't want to cover the whole thing with this color and then have none of the other shades that you did underneath. Like, why did you bother using three colors if you're going to cover everything with the top one? Let's take a look at the, uh, oh, that's right, these losers are still on the tree. Maybe they just didn't want to help the Ottomans. Maybe that was the deal. I can't blame them too much then, I guess. I love my Ottoman army, but boy, there's... Let's pull out the fast one. We don't need to pull every one of them out. One's enough. And just see, color-wise... That's about right. That's about right. So let's go ahead and give the little rocks a wash, like we do with the. I don't even know what the hell it's called. It's not ivory. Pale sand, I think, is what it is. It's a super ass, watery ass color. That's what it is. Pale sand. And then we'll take a little bathroom break, and then we'll come back and. No, we'll paint the edges. Then we'll take a little bathroom break. Then we'll come back and hopefully we'll have to talk about some other things probably for about 10 minutes. And then we could start putting the, um, the flocking. We don't want to do the flocking where the edges are wet. And we don't want to do the edges afterwards because it creates a different issue. All right, let's do... Oh, we need to water that down a little bit. Even though it seems like the original paint's pretty wet. Don't mind me, I'm just rambling over here. It's called self-coaching. I coined that term. Term. I don't know, maybe somebody else has said it before, but... You arguing with yourself? Nope, I'm self-coaching. 
it's okay to even talk to yourself. As long, you can even argue with yourself. You just got to make sure you win the argument. You don't want to have an argument with yourself and lose the argument. You know, that's, that doesn't look good. You know, you're going to be wearing a jacket that's a little too tight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. And let's paint the black. And here's the one. I usually don't make a mess painting, but here's one of the instances where it does happen. Aha. Uh -huh. Ooh. Goopy. I see, this is what, I'm gonna show you this. This is amazing. This is airbrush thinner. This is not water. Because if it was water, I couldn't do this. Look at this big old glob of paint that I have on here. Now look what happens when I touch it. It doesn't spread. It doesn't spread and turn this entire thing black. So whatever magic juice this stuff is, it's amazing. So I don't know what the hell it's made out of. Like I've said, it's, it's kind of, if you wear contacts, it feels like it's saline. Um, it's a little slippery. And um, it works a hell of a lot better than thinning with water. So magic ingredients. Going to paint the edge here in black because I like the look of that. I was I did on the first couple armies, I would just repaint it in the same darkest shade brown, but I like the black so it stands out a little bit, little bit more. They are playing pieces after all. I'm not building a diorama here, so we've done that before. That's unsatisfying. I've done my time with dioramas and. Okay, I'm done with it. I put it away. Now what? Oh, well, that's it. You can look at it whenever you want to. No. I want to go to the battlefield with my, with my folks. Two down. Two to go. And the one thing about painting edges like this, if you buy one of those cheap sets of brushes, you always get one that has like a square, square blade. That's, you'd think that'd be the one to paint edges. Well, you're wrong. That's not worth a damn. That's, it's okay for dry brushing, but or maybe painting something else. But miniature painting, that's nah, not good for painting edges. Well, I have, I've had no luck with it. You end up going over the edge and having to paint it back down. So... And I actually encourage, if you want to paint the edges of your stands a certain color, I encourage you to use craft paint. Because craft paint has very high, very high filler to pigment. And the filler is much flatter. And unless you want glossy edges, which I don't, then this works better for that. The reason I went with this cheapo paint is because I figured, well, it's probably going to get scuffed up a lot in playing. And that's, well, that, was, that wasn't the case. But I didn't know that. I just assumed that it would get scuffed up. But, you know, you got to be careful with your stuff. If you're spending this much time painting them, you don't need to replace them every time. You love the Turkish battles. The black edges look great and make the base pop. They do. I agree. And, but I didn't, I didn't know that originally. You know, you, you've got to, I actually probably saw somebody else and like how they did it. And I'm like, it was my Renaissance stuff that was the first ones I did with the with the black base. It does make them pop. So, yeah, the Turkish battles were great. I think I was probably at a significant disadvantage since I had some units that cost two pips to move them. But I still had fun, you know. I should have, could have won both of those, but it didn't happen. That's why we keep coming back for more. Okay, folks, I will be right back. And... Um, we're just going to mute it, and I'll be right back, and we'll, hopefully, we can do the flocking.
right, we're back. So here is this is what he looks like without the grass on there. There's not a whole lot of grass. There's some, and, I, and I, I'll be honest with you, I use it to cover up mistakes. So if there's maybe you know you get you get the ground coverage in a way that you want it, but it always recedes as it as it uh, as it uh, as it dries. It'll get smaller, and it'll, it, you'll have it a certain thickness that'll recede a little bit. So if you if you don't if something happens and you don't have it exactly how you want it, using the um, the flocking is a way to kind of fix up your mistakes so to speak or maybe things don't turn up exactly how you want them to so how are we doing on that edge should dry relatively quick all right let's get this into view mr nordic welcome that's probably enough yeah good old elmer's um, let's see what we can find mistakes with. Where is the mistakes? And then, of course, we're going to have flock, flocking on there as well. So I don't love the way the bottom of this horse meets it. So we'll put a little bit of grass there. And I don't just put it in those places, but that's a good place to put it in along with other places that you may have. So, um, actually, the basing on this turned out better than most of the time. This is kind of wonky back in here. Let's make sure we put some there. And then we'll just, we'll put some patches here. Patches there. All right, what we'll do is we should have a tree. one of these carrying trays. This one's actually made by um, Dave's Baggage Train. They have a, a proprietary carrying system that involves these guys interlocking kind of in a big duffel bag. Well, the hell with that. I've got my own carrying system, but um, this allows, you know, when you're playing in a tournament, one of the things that takes a lot of time is moving your figures from base, from, from table to table. And if you've got something like this that you, with an edge on it, obviously, where you could transport them really speeds up the whole process. So we're just going to use this because we want to try to recoup as many of these uh, flyaways as we can. And I'm not wearing a synthetic shirt. And that's important. Do not wear a synthetic shirt if you're going to do this or you're going to end up um, tarring and feathering yourself, so to speak. Um, a bit of an exaggeration, but you get the point. This stuff's going to be all over the place in places you don't necessarily want it to. Unless you want to look like um, a green, well, oh, there we go. And don't breathe on it. Don't say the letter P when you're when you have it in your face. Uh, well, you're gonna look like a green big bird. Oh, the fan is really kicking things off. Well, I'm sorry. I work with fans. That's why I. That's why it didn't work out for me to use an airbrush, because to use an airbrush, I got to be in the garage, and the garage is hot, and I don't work with my hobby in a hot environment. All right, let's see if we can kick some of this stuff off. I don't do a tremendous amount of blowing on it. I think it's good, just the way that is. So. It doesn't look half bad right now, but we can do better than that. Okay, so we're going to make this as easy as we can. 
put the glasses back on so I can see. Sometimes I need them to see. Sometimes I have to take them off to see. Mm. Welcome back. Not a single Russian invaded while you were gone. I didn't watch the news today. I'm, I'm kind of done. I don't want to talk about current events, but... You know, one of the first things that happened was that little island. One of the first things that was reported with the invasion was that little island called Snake Island. There were supposedly 13 Ukrainian soldiers on there. And uh, this is like literally on day one, you know, of, uh, of Reverse Barbarossa, whatever. Day, day one, uh, 13, sol 13 Ukrainian soldiers were on this island. And uh, this Russian ship came up, warship came up and said, hey, you guys need to surrender. And it was reported that they said, F your mother or whatever. And they were all killed. And then like three days later, they were alive. So it's like, you, you know, you're just making up shit. So if you're going to make up things, you know, I'm not going to pay attention to what you have to say. You know? <laughs> I'm just not going to listen to your, your nonsense. So... Uh, da, 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 what am I missing? What am I missing? What am I missing? What am I missing? Uh, they're afraid of me, so I don't blame them. Speaking of Russians, I've made a long-term gaming decision. Uh-oh. I want to build a gaming table to represent Stalingrad and collect troops for the battle. Just need to decide on 6mm, 10, or 15. It's a lot of destroyed buildings. That's a lot of destroyed buildings. Uh, put the fear of God in the Russians. They don't want anything you do with the maelstrom in a fight. Hi, Tony. The command element looks great. What skill do you think I should do the Stalingrad project, Rick? 6, 10, or 15? Good number of German tanks. Six, that scale. Well, you don't need a whole lot of German tanks to do Stalingrad. Although there were two Panzer divisions there. The Oh, boy. Here we go. The, four, the 25th and I want to say the 14th. So... The jumping horse one is one of them, which I believe is the 25th. I got to I gotta remember this stuff or, you know, we're going to be up a creek. And I want to say the, the, the 14th is the one that had kind of like a little, it was like a little symbol, like a, a square, almost like a ribbon. I don't know. I could be wrong. Uh, da, 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 da. The problem with six millimeters, infantry just suck. Um, they're not exciting to paint infantry or to play with them, which is why I stopped playing my, micro armor. Because, um, you know, anywho, let's get, let's get, uh, the tough situation. Welcome, Greg. Going to see, um, some of your toughs in action in some of the Polish allies. They're going to have, um, some of those brighter colors. So they look a little different. I'm, I'm curious to see how that's going to work. To have allies that look slightly different if they won't pop a little bit. So, okay. I actually have some Stalingrad figures, some Stalingrad, a figure line in 20 millimeter that was made by one of my favorite manufacturers and. I had gotten them just before I got into DBA, and then I checked on them like in a year and a half ago when they've been out of business, and, and the molds were ruined and not available anymore, and they went out of business. I'm like, what the hell, man? I just I just got these. Well, yeah, I just got these, you know, freaking 20 years ago, you know, so. Oh, we need some moss. We need some happy moss. Where the hell did Fred that grab? Here we go. Probably only like one of each of these things. Let's see. Do we have a spot here? I wanted these guys to look very dark. Very dark, uh, morose. Uh, maybe, that's, maybe that's the wrong term. Um, wish this guy had a pet dog or something like that on the stand. He'd, he'd kick some more ass for sure. Nothing like Odago to be winning battles for you. All right, we're going to put that one there. Oh, this is the this is the brighter one. Okay, those two. Yeah, 
it should be fine. Okay. What are the two thumbnails in the bottom right corner? That's the two flags I made. Right here. Oh, helps if you hold them upside down. It doesn't hold them upside down. Yeah, so the black one is the flag for uh, Vlad. And, uh, and the other one is the one for the, the Knight Commander, which is um, the Moldavians. So I'm building both commanders because because I am. <laughs> the, the Polish allies are the ally to the Moldavians. These guys would have uh, do not have Polish allies. Um, Vlad didn't um, hang out with the Poles for some reason. According to the Book of Barker, let me put that as a caveat. The Book of Barker saith that that was not the case. Um, I'm actually changing my mind, and I'm going to go ahead and put a big bushy one here. And the reason for that is I want to cover up some of this stuff here that I'm not too thrilled about. It's this big old bastard right here. Where is the tweezers? And this is where this material is, I don't like it as much as as the, the Liquitex. I actually like it better than the Liquitex as a whole. But when it comes to put down the tufts, I can't push them into the stuff and have them give them extra grip. Not that I've really had any fall off, but... All right, we're going to have this color, this moss right here. And they're kind of self-sticking, but I don't want to rely on that. I'm just going to put them down and make it difficult for them to be a pain. All right, we got one up here. I have this brighter one here. Not brighter, lighter one. And I think one of these towards the back, and we're good. We'll put it right here. Oh, let me do something because what setting is this on? No, this. Oh, it says daylight. Exposure offset. Okay, that's about right. That's an automatic. This ombre is going small. It was the 14th and 24th. Okay, so the 24th is... Uh, the 24th was that hopping... Um, that hopping horse thing. 
What from six million could probably get the entire center table? For me, inside a tank division as well. Well, if you're doing inside the city, what would you do if you let someone borrow something and they returned it with Cheeto finger stains? Who the hell eats Cheetos? If you're going to eat Cheetos, and I, I've gotten Cheetos before at lunch, what you do is you get a sandwich. I should trademark this. You get a sandwich in a sandwich bag, right? And then you take the sandwich out, and then you put your fingers in the sandwich bag, and then you eat it like that so you don't get them all over your damn fingers. So, okay. So, this is where we're at right now. So, should we do the flag? God, it's stressful to do the damn flag on film. I'll be honest with you, I don't spend a ton of effort on it. I mean, I've, I've drawn it. I don't put a piece of... Um, I don't try to bend it too much. I've had bad results with that and get wrinkles in it and stuff like that. So, I like to kind of keep it basic. So, let's decide what flag we're going to do. For, for starters, we're going to get a new blade okay because this is what you need a new blade for or all of this just went out the window and if i botch this i'll just have to print another one it's not the end of the world i'd like to do things right the first time but sometimes there's just uh other plans in play yeah, that'd be nice if i could find where my blades are they should be right here Twenty fourth had the jumping horse. Yeah, I remember because I think that's a stupid looking emblem. Sorry, it's because it originally was a cavalry division. Hey, you gotta know your Nazis. I was a one thirty fifth scale armor modeler, so that's how I remember that stuff. I never liked that emblem. Um. All right, so which one of the, first of all, which one of these we're going to do? Well, let's start off the, let's get rid of this glue. Let's get rid of that with a glue. Okay, let's cut this extra paper off. And let's zoom out a little bit. Zoom out. There we go. All right. As you can see, I have a cutting board here. I don't ever cut on it. I'm... I'm protective of it, and I didn't even pay for it. It's just, just too expensive. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Whew, now we can breathe. All right. We're not doing any mold davings tonight, so let's get cut them. Really? What was that? Davian flags, we're not going to mess with them right now. All right, so which one of these are we going to do? It's certainly not the big one. It's just too large. Well, first of all, it's too long also. And I didn't make that dimension. That's the dimension that was online. So if it's going to be that long, it's definitely not going to be this big one. Let's just take the big one out of the equation. All right. probably going to be the little one for this one just because it's so damn long we'll trim it up more when we know that it's the one that we're going to use let's take a look at it here
way too big, way too big to be this one. We're going to use a little one, okay? All right. black. I tried using a Sharpie. I have a lot more control with a brush. The problem with a Sharpie is, is you only have one thickness, you only have one amount of flow, unless you've left the Sharpie out and it's drying out. You know, the thing is, is the edge of this already got nicked off. These must be made in freaking China or some place like that. some shoddy quality control place. Tiny little thin white border. I mean, really, really tiny. That's fine. are flush so we're going to put the ends together and we're going to fold it it's going to like go like this and some um, nerdenheimer ruined my idea when I ended up putting the flag down here where it makes sense of no it needs to be attached to the top of the gaff I'm like oh crap now I can't unsee that. So now I've got to make sure that I do that every time. So one of the advantages of using these really thin pins is the less, the more, smaller diameter this is, the less problem you have with it um, losing part of it. The smaller this is, is the, the tighter you can wrap this. So um, yeah, that's how, we're, that's how we're going to plan on doing it. So. What I like to do is, and I probably don't have one of these anymore because they've walked off. So I'll we'll just have to make another one. Is I like using a cork. And I like using a needle. interrupted in the middle of picking up my room. And I'm purposefully not using a needle that's the same size as the other needle. I want a bigger one. Kind of like the one I use to mix my epoxy. Okay. And for safety purposes, let's make sure that the edge of it has been filed down. We're going to take this needle and we're going to put the back end of it into here. I had one of these around here somewhere and it just walked off. Okay, so now we have a cork with a needle in it. And yeah, it's a little bit of an angle, but it's not that much of an angle like it's shown in the picture. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, so. What we're going to do is we're going to use this as a guide because we don't want to do this thing while it's attached to the figure. Okay, 
and we're going to glue the, the back end of it and work this way. And um, I don't like putting a ton of it and making it really wet because I'm afraid that it'll, um, it'll moisten it too much. So uh, it may not be as bendy as you like it, but it works for me. Um, really? This fan is being that much of a bitch? Go down to one. Don't live, can't live without my fan. All right, let's get some fresh Elmer's here. Come on, you can do it. And how's this water clean enough? Yeah. All right, now we need to use a brush that maybe we like a little bit more. And the other thing I like to do is grab it like so. Oh no, we don't need any of that though. I don't need any flocking. You want to make sure the edges are applied well. I don't think I stuck it on both sides. I think I just stuck it on one. Just lose the glasses completely. Now, I'll paint the rest of this on here. One thing I don't like about this process is it's just not forgiving. And I'm going to put it on the other side as well. And honestly, I'm just not used to that. I'm not used to things. I'm not used to working on, on something and it's not forgiving. Now, I'm actually avoiding putting, putting um, any glue here so that I can't slide it up and down. Okay? We'll get to that. I want to shape it somewhat while it's on this, not while it's on the figure where I don't have as much control. So we're going to put this over the edge. Here goes everything. wrinkle it too much because then you'll create visible wrinkles in here that are way out of scale. Yeah, I think something like that is probably good enough.
and then we will open this up a little bit or not open this up a little bit and take the omers put it more towards the top because it's going you're going to push it down slide this from the top and hopefully we didn't apply it too thick like it looks I may like I may have mm -hmm. close this shut and that's what it looks like obviously without the border painted which we won't do till tomorrow we don't want to add any kind of moisture that's going to um, interfere with that let's see mm. So yeah, I don't want to put a ton of crinkles because then I got to worry about it having all these weird folds and stuff like that. So. Da -da 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 -da. The charging Knight of the 505th Heavy Panzer Regiment. Yeah. Put unwatered wellness on the area of flag attached to the pole and water down armors on the rest of the flag. Hold the pole great. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't want to use a bigger one. It, otherwise, it, it would be way the hell out here. So. Okay. So that's it. We're going to have to... It looks like shit right now with the, with the white border. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll do black around that border. I did forget one little thing, which I did last time to save me some trouble, is before I glued it... I would have painted black around the edge of this so I don't have to get close to the pole. But the pole is actually at the spot where there's a little black line. So if I go onto the pole, it's not a big deal. So anyhow, that's the command stand. That's what it looks like. So um, we'll have an opportunity to look at another one, the other commander, um, when, uh, when we do the Moldavians. So anyhow, we'll see what kind of a candy-ass fighter this guy is or not i happen to like a cavalry general a lot um i did not find them i i did a um i did a google image search for this Let's see if i can this is a google image search with no shading and then i went in a paint program and shaded it on my tablet and then i printed it I saved it as a PNG, so it had nice, lots of resolution, and then I printed it on a laser printer. And, yeah, I've done that. Uh, I did that with the Moldavian ones as well. It's just, go to, do a Google image search, and it could be just as simple as an image that, that you find on uh, Wikipedia. And uh, and modify it accordingly. Where's my uh, where's my Scottish one? Here we go. This is actually probably one of the ones that turned out the best. Yeah, same thing. This image was literally only white and uh, blue. And um, and I added I added the red. Actually, it may have already had the red, but it had zero shading on it. And you can see it almost shaded, almost like it looks like denim. It it really turned out really well. I'm surprised. So. Um, yeah. Need a bunch of flags for AWI. Yeah. Well, they, you know, they, I would buy these. There's a, there's a guy named Pete's Flags who makes flags better than I could make, but he doesn't have, uh, you have a ring just like that. Okay, Vlad. 
<laughs> cool. It's a cool emblem. So, okay. Well, until next time, folks, thanks for stopping by. And um, we'll, um, after we, we're going to paint the edge of this flag and then we'll take some pictures with them. I finally figured out what the problem was with my camera. I was taking horrible pictures with my camera. And uh, the settings, the, the resolution settings were messed up on it. I never changed them, but they must have changed themselves or something. But um, we got that all resolved. We can take some better pictures. So, yeah, there he is. Cavalry General for the Valachian Army. Technically, the Army's done now. Um, now, I'm not going to play the Army until I have the camp done. You know, the lawn ornaments are done. So then we're going to do the lawn ornaments next. And then we'll do the Valachian Commander. And, um, and then we'll run into the Polish allies. That's the plan. So, um, okay. Until next time, folks, thanks for coming by, keeping me company, and uh, we're able to knock this out. And, uh, yeah, catch you guys next time. Be well. And.